Greetings, Starfighters, and welcome to Shameless Cash Grab Second Opinions. I'm Morgan. And I'm Robin. Formerly of Geek of All Trades. And we're here to add our two cents worth on the films Arkle rated as best of set for the first six seasons. Let's just go ahead and announce number two and number one, because I do feel like I kind of need to talk about them together in order to explain why number two is number two and number one is number one. So, first up... Number two... Ghost Shark. And then... Number one. Mississippi River Sharks. Okay, so I mentioned before the uh, trope that I'm not a fan of where the only black character in a horror movie dies. That's pretty much why Ghost Shark is number two instead of number one. Although for a couple of months there, it really looked like it was going to be number one. Now, while well, not every, it does have, it has more than one black character, more than one with a name, more than one with dialogue. Problem is, most of them die. <laughs> not, like, there, there are plenty of people of color in the movie who, who survive, but, like, I don't remember if any of them had so much as a single line of dialogue, and I am even more certain that none of the ones who survived had names. So that's why Ghost Shark is below Mississippi River Sharks. Now, to Ghost Shark's credit, as a, just, a, just as a movie, uh, the shark kills are actually fairly creative. Probably some of the most creative in, in the whole set. I mean, it, it could have been more so, but I mean, it was being made for TV, so it had the budget and network sensors to deal with. Another thing that Ghost Shark has going for it is the performance of Richard Maul. The guy has been a long-running character actor for a reason. It's definitely more to do than just his height. The guy is actually talented. And I think, if anything, he might have actually given a better performance than this movie necessarily deserved. He is definitely a highlight. Probably some of the best acting of the whole set. And I'm including the movie that I put at number one here. So, what, 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 uh, like I, I think I already mentioned that the tiebreaker was how the movie treated the black characters. So, Mississippi River Sharks. Most of the black characters that have names and dialogue survive. And, mixed race couple that gets a happy ending and nobody makes a huge deal out of it. That's a positive because something that happened in both Ozark Sharks and Swamp Sharks, you had mixed race couples in those movies, but one or both partners got eaten. I, I, now, to be fair, I doubt that was intentional on the part of the filmmakers, but it's still kind of, you know. Mississippi River Sharks does not have that problem. In fact, uh, Mississippi River Sharks, the, the more I think about it, uh, and the more I realize that a lot of the movies that came after it in the set were made before it in terms of production. So I'm thinking that Mississippi River Sharks might have actually been the sub-sub-genre of killer shark movies made specifically for the Sci-Fi Channel, Mississippi River Sharks was sort of a self-parody. There are a lot of jokes in it that, again, actually make a little more sense to me once I have seen the other movies on the set. Again, even though those movies were made before it. Uh, particularly the thing with Jason London playing himself, because he's in a lot of these movies. Uh, he plays himself as a complete narcissist. He does have that thing in the movie where He's being completely unhelpful until he decides to try and actually be helpful and then immediately dies. But again, because it's played for laughs, I didn't quite have, I don't have as much of a problem with that as I had with, with it, like in Zombie Shark. Or even in, a, I think there was a scene like that in Swamp Shark too, now that I think about it. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely funny because I think it's kind of making fun. It's making fun of its own sub-sub-sub-sub-genre. Sub like I said, I am sorry, it is so hot in here. And you, you have the mixed race couple that gets the happy ending. Uh, pretty much every intentional joke lands to varying degrees. I mean, from a, just a, a sensible chuckle to an all-out laugh. And uh, now the downside is, like, you know, a lot of the shark kills on and in it aren't anywhere near as creative as Ghost Shark or, honestly, any of the other movies, if we're being completely honest here. But again, 
it seems to be more about the meta humor of making fun of itself and its genre than just being a straightforward killer shark movie. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit of a sucker for meta humor. I mean, they, not every meta joke that I see is going to work for me, but I appreciate it when it is well done. And I think in Mississippi River Shark's case, the meta humor works. And that, plus the better treatment of its non-white characters, that is why, <laughs> despite some of its shortcomings, I ultimately decided to put it above Ghost Shark. So yeah, surprising even myself, and I imagine surprising <laughs> those of you who were following this season, Mississippi River Sharks gets the title of Best Movie in the Set. <laughs> what, what more is there to say to that then? Hello, and welcome to Shameless Cash Grab Second Opinions, Season 6, Shark Bait, Mississippi River Shark. <laughs> I mean, the whole set is just kind of, these were all made for, I think they're all made for TV. Well, this one was. This one was definitely the Siffy original. And we thought that was going to be points against it. They managed to turn it into a net positive, although net positive is definitely important <laughs> there. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is that. Arkel mentions that this is kind of a self-parody. To um, put it mildly. <laughs> as he put it, he watched them in the order there on the set, because that's what he does. And yeah. this movie actually comes after some of the other ones that were done by a lot of the same people. And I imagine that you get the jokes more if you've seen the other movies. Now, for us, it was just a case of we knew about the other movies, so we kind of yeah. knew that the jokes were there. But I had also forgotten some of them. Yeah. So, But yeah, it's pretty clear that they're all just yeah haha ha, look at the stupid movies yeah. we made <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean the shark bite thing is clearly sh the sharks sh in the ozark yeah shark yeah shark bite three yeah. we don't talk mm. about shark bite three <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's very self-referential it's a self-parody it is really clear that they're not taking themselves too seriously and, yeah. and that helps because yeah. that means that you know a lot of the humor is intentional right and it works surprising amounts of I mean, we did not have high hopes for this film and the start, because we didn't realize this was a joke movie, the, the shark attack on the riverboat is just bad. Well, it, remember, it starts terrible. with, you've got that, it looks like somebody with their boy shark in a tank, yeah. and then the guy going, one shark two sharks, shark, red, red shark, shark, dead shark. shark. Yeah. And we're one like, fish. oh one my fish, two god. Fish. Yeah, one fish, this two is fish. just so yeah. terrible. And then you find out that that's actually yeah, a movie. A show within a show. A show, yeah. you know, the bit of a movie that the other people are talking about. Oh, it's one of those shark bite movies. Those are awful. Oh, but I love them. And that kind of becomes a yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, it's actually surprisingly relevant to the plot. It's not central per se, but you know, there's this major character who's part of those movies. And there's another character that's a big fan of the movie. So, <laughs> fortunately, he's not the fan tarn type. Yeah. He's not a... He's a lovable loser, not a please-eat-him loser. Yeah, he doesn't... If other people don't like the films, he's like, oh, but they're so good, instead of, oh, you're obviously a terrible person yeah. because you don't like these yeah. movies. There's so... a couple of I-don't-even-know-you jokes, but that's as, as, as serious as he ever gets about well, it. Well, yes, and those are clearly made in jest to a friend. Yeah. So it's not like he's really disowning the person yeah. just because of that. I had a note here. Check if Shark Bite series is a callback. Um, yeah, just a little. <laughs> yeah. The, the, but that doesn't but, change the fact of how terrible the CG yeah, the, the is CG when the real, the quote unquote, puppetry yeah. on the sharks is really almost every time you see a shark you wince at the effect. But the thing is at first they kind of do the riverboat attack as seriously as they can but as it becomes increasingly obvious that it's totally ridiculous it becomes part of the joke. The yeah. terrible CG actually ends up working because it's supposed to be stupid. Yeah like every time you see body parts in the water <laughs> it's really clear that these yeah. are pieces of mannequins they yeah. don't even try to make them look like pieces of real people which is probably just Every as time well. there's a blood splatter it looks more like red jello yeah, or syrup or syrup really there's, thin there's syrup. a translucence yeah. to it that it's really clear that they're not yeah. although trying the, to be yeah. actually gory yeah although after the more realistic gore of killing machine which i forgot to mention at the time it wasn't really a problem it, it really serves what they were trying to do to be so ridiculous with yeah. the special effect. i forget what it was that led up to this particular comment i think it was oh. just taking the, the uh, oh it's the, the reporter arrived and she's yeah. talking about how until you know, 
this is this is her first assignment and she's gonna make something of it and this bubba walks past belches scratches his butt crack and his she's looking yeah several inches of butt crack you need some spackle there and she's like oh my god what am i doing here Oops. and her cameraman who is one of the people of color is yeah. clearly sympathetic he's like yeah. he's a veteran cameraman who got stuck with this cub mm-hmm. reporter well, and I, I get the feeling that he's kind of her her chaperone he's yeah. looking out for her during this this and in case any of the bubba's decide to get uh that too. nasty which they don't none of them do the this only nasty character the... it has nothing to do with him being being southern it's, it's just that he's a jerk and he's a jerk to everybody yeah and Equal, that is yeah, he's an equal opportunity asshole. That is one thing we will both give this movie major props for. If there's casual sexism, it's because a specific character is being casually sexist, and it makes it clear that that is not good behavior. Yeah. There's, and I don't think there's any casual racism. No, I can't think of one moment. I think you could replace every black character in the movie with a white character, and or vice versa, or vice versa, and nothing would change. Yeah. So there aren't a lot of black characters, but the ones. who who are there? There are black characters in important roles, mm-hmm. and they are and only their one characters. Of them dies. Yeah. Only one of them dies, and he's not the first one to die. No, he is one of several casualties. Yeah, he, there are a lot of casualties, and yeah. the white oh. casualties far out with black casualties. Yeah. And Which is well, fair, you know, and this is Mississippi. You're not going to have a lot of people who aren't either white or black. You're not. This is yeah. not an area where you're going to have Although, interestingly, a Hispanic or Asian. Population I'm not sure that the, the protagonist, that the heroine, she looked like she might be as someone who's uh, half Puerto Rican descent, that she might be of partially Hispanic ancestry. I couldn't um, tell. Well, because there's her, her mother is just not there. Not there. There's no mention of her. You, you get the impression because they never talk about her that she's probably been gone for a long long time and they've they're both come to terms with it her and her dad and it's just something they don't talk about yeah but yeah yeah, i could totally see her mother having been hispanic yeah so yeah it's it's actually really nice of course it's a shark film the mayor from jaws has moved to mississippi and gone into used car sales (laughs) well maybe new car probably yeah probably new cars you get the impression it's not a big bill sells cars probably big bill sells cars new New and used used and whatever because a truck was going to be the one of the prizes for their catfish rodeo yeah monsters of the mississippi (laughs) turns out to be a bit of an ironic name yeah there is though because the first shark attack that you see at the beginning and then people are hearing about it and it was supposed to be down near New Orleans and somebody makes a comment about them being hundreds of miles up river so at you know, first not being too concerned about the sharks in New Orleans when you're hundreds of miles up river is reasonable yeah at first it is entirely reasonable at first at first but well uh let's see but, then there's another note about the fake blood and another note about the representation oh yeah and this guy the, the uh big bill he's, the mayor from jaws character because he's not the mayor of this area it's like oh he's a car salesman okay that explains because yeah, yeah. he's the bubba he's got the cowboy hat yeah He's running this festival, yeah. and he's obviously the big shot in these right. parts, and he knows it. Yeah. One of the, the nice things about the representation, Arkle mentions this, there's a mixed race couple, and Eric, Eric's a sweetie. He's so awkward, but it's kind of adorable. Yeah, he's... He's, he's got this crush. He's, and, he's adorable. Yes, he absolutely is. Yeah. Uh, and he clearly has... They make it explicit mm-hmm. that he has been kind of sweet on the girl whose name I unfortunately... Tara. Tara, since they were in high school. Yeah. And she's been off to college. College. Yeah. And so he's happy to see her back. Yeah. But it's not creepy. Yeah. He's not a creeper about Very it. Very important. Her main story arc is she's back in town because she's doubting herself. This would be the perfect opportunity for someone who's even low key creeper to encourage her to stay home. Instead, because he's got a genuine crush that then cares about her as opposed to just wanting her, he encourages her, like most of the other characters, to go back because basically we have faith in you. A lot of the positive characters are telling her this, and he could have very easily tried to sabotage her and get her to stay and he doesn't he's very supportive of her throughout the entire yeah, film it, even it, though it is obvious mean... that her yeah. happiness her having a career that she wants instead of coming yeah. home to run dad's hardware store because she doesn't feel like she can cut it her doing what she wants and being happy is more important to him than having her a shot, being in, unquote, in, yeah. in podunk with him right and then for a while that takes a back seat to people are being murdered by sharks and at first they do this thing where the shark basically you get it from the shark's perspective and then the person disappears as a splatter blood and they disappear body parts we appear well, later something that's obviously supposed to be blood but doesn't really look anything like yeah, the, the red syrup the, yeah. the red jello it's strawberry but, syrup that's yeah. what it is but then we get our first uh, shark attack where we get to see the attack 
and uh, Tara's father, whose this, name I yeah, can't remember. The, this whole thing is based on there's this catfishing festival going on in this little appears to be a fairly small town, and so everybody's out in the water because they're out trying to catch right. catfish. Well, any good quote unquote shark movie has to have people near the water, and or there has in to be, the water yeah, or out on a little right. boat. And well, the used car salesman from Jaws is trying to get everyone to stay because he'll take a metaphorical bath, financially speaking, if this thing gets canceled. Yeah, and so there's the tension of that and well there's this guy out on the water and Tara's father sees him getting attacked and rushes out to save him and pulls him out of the water and there's a shark right through his chest I, I screen capped that one so we can show you just how <laughs> ridiculous it is and the screen cap is from the side but when you have it see it full on it's just it's not even really good CG that they photoshop the shark over the guy's torso and even if it was that's not how physics works or biology works or anything that's not how anything you know, works I mean this is the guy standing there looking down at this shark like this, it's a chest this, burster this, this foot a cross hole in his torso with a shark sticking through it and looking around and like, oh, oh, that's not good. And then he falls over. Right. So, yeah, it was clearly not done seriously. Yeah. And at first it's like, are you serious? And then, of course, no, it's not serious. It, it becomes part of the gag as the movie goes on. You know, Arkel says there aren't as many cool shark attacks as in other films. I think Ghost Shark was the one he was comparing it to, yeah. which we haven't seen. But because, when I they mean, decide to yeah, show an attack, it, it is insane. It is ridiculous. We'll get to another one of those yeah. later. There's a point here where, okay, there's the sheriff, the dad, and the reporter. Right. And it's like the sheriff's like, okay I need to go and do something and to dad and the reporter like okay well we need to get to the marina because I need to check on my daughter and make sure she's okay but the sheriff's like no I'm fine and we're going three two no that, one. that's why I mentioned the earlier one because that uh, I, we were doing that because after the guy with the shark through his chest realizes he's dead the dad T Tara's dad rushes out of oh, the water oh that's right that's, and then the yeah, sheriff I, pulls I, I up had, I had the wrong part the, there yeah and the sheriff is going into the water to retrieve the body and Tara's dad is doing the smart person at a shark movie thing going don't go in the water and just Wait, that's right that's where job. the sheriff I'm says I, oh, yeah. i'm fine and we go three two, two one <laughs> and he gets attacked he survives at the time and it all he loses is, is a boot is a boot yeah but yeah well no the shark never gets him this is true yeah and then we cut back to our kids and wyatt is complaining about eric crushing on tara okay, instead of uh, helping him wyatt is basically oh, Wyatt's the white uh, the, the he's the white nerdy fan. guy who's the fan of the shark, shark bite movies and the star of the sh shark bite movies oh, who is in town right for this festival forgot to mention that and Jason he's basically London. and he's basically he was in some of the earlier movies right in this series so he's basically playing himself yeah. as I didn't think of this earlier he reminds me very much of Brendan Fraser in Looney Tunes back in action oh! <laughs> yes. basically taking shots at himself talking about how the character he's playing in Looney Tunes back in action was the stuntman for Brendan Fraser in the mummy movies who famously did his own stunts and says I'm in those movies more than he is <laughs> and when he's actually playing Brendan Fraser as opposed to, to the stuntman uh, he's being all Hollywood mm, star uh, about yeah. things and uh, being, he's being a total and, yeah. diva yeah and so, well, well, Jason London's being a total diva, but he also knows he's a Siffy diva, and so he's very much a, a third tier diva yeah. in his behavior and his actions the and everything. It's really funny. But um, big fish in a small pond. Oh. Uh, Except he turns out to not to be the biggest fish. True. But the point is that at one point, Wyatt is complaining about his friend Eric going after the protagonist because he's got the crush. And he's like, dude, you would drop your friend in a hot minute for this Jason London guy from your yeah. shark bite movies. So the main protagonist, are, Tara is clearly the protagonist yeah. of this movie right. because we open with her before, we, yeah. well, after the cold open with right. the sharks attacking mm -hmm. the riverboat. Yeah. And so then you've got the two guys who are here in town. There's right. Wyatt, who is the shark nerd, yeah. and Eric, who is basically who is, the mechanic and he's the all-around fix-it smart guy besides Tara whose intelligence does become a plot point. She's more of a scientific intelligence and he's the, like you said he's the mechanic. A, yeah. Wyatt and Eric are clearly best buds because they're entering this this right. fishing derby mm -hmm. together right. as a team and Wyatt does try to be a good wingman sometimes. <laughs> Eventually. And other times he's like hey dude why are you going off to help her instead of staying here and helping us win this prize? Yeah. And to be fair everyone who's not one of these characters from Jaws who gets shark karma is trying to help with the shark situation. As soon as they realize people are dying, we'll deal with that other stuff later. Right now we gotta stop people from getting et. Yeah. <laughs> 
there, there's sharks in the water. We need, there are people in the water. We need to get the people out of the water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I forget who that was that I mentioned, the good oh, tear us down. discipline. Basically, as the sheriff is getting out of the water. Oh, that's right. Because, yeah, uh, the, uh, the way the sheriff escapes. Yeah, because the sheriff is, no, I'll, I'll be okay going in the water. Because he hands the Tara's dad a, a rifle and says, because you're going to cover me. Right. And, well, this guy has a hardware store, but he sells guns at the hardware store, so it's clear this he guy knows, knows how, how to handle a gun. Right. And he does. But he's being really careful in terms of lining up his shots. He's not just going, oh, my God, shark, bang, 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 bang. And with the sheriff out there, yeah. he's being really careful to not, yeah, not shooting the sheriff is more important than shooting the shark. Yeah. And that was a good bit of gun discipline. Yeah. Yeah. that I appreciated, even as somebody who is not a gun person. Yeah. And I was really sure the sheriff was going to die there. Yeah. Kind of surprised he didn't. Yeah. One thing that we noticed, and at first I thought it was a glitch in the video, this was made for TV. And it shows because there's oh. these little fraction of a second flashes of black about every 10, 15 yep. minutes. And it took a while for me to realize, oh, those were for the commercial breaks. When you're putting it on DVD, you could have edited those out. You didn't need the obvious, this is where the commercial break fits. They're too long to be stutters, and they're too short to be actual breaks when you're watching it on DVD. They're just these flashes of black that are really annoying. Yeah. A black screen. So there's this one character oh, yeah. who's yeah, he's two the guy main who, jerks. who always wins. I don't know why I'm doing air quotes on an audio. <laughs> always wins the derby. Everybody calls him possum. Yeah. And, and, we and he he's a cheating. jerk. Yeah. And you find out he is because he talks about, oh, he's so great. All you need to catch the fish is two things. And he holds up his hands, right? Yeah. So he goes out and he makes sure nobody's watching and he opens up the cooler and there's this big old catfish in the cooler. And I have to imagine he put it in the water long enough so that it was, didn't feel like it had been iced when he handed it yeah. to the judges to weigh. Yeah. So it, it was really, really obvious that not only is this guy a jerk, it's like winning this catfish derby is like the only thing that makes him important. Yeah. It's the, it it is the, without it, he's nothing. Right. It's it's, the center of his life. It's like, please eat him. Please eat possum. And these kind of shark movies, because this is not trying to subvert these, it's being silly about them. It's being parodic, but guys like him are going to get eaten. So I was like, please. (laughs) Yeah. This is like, this guy, this this guy is going to die. Because after they killed off people who were nice people, like the woman. Yeah. Did you see in the hardware store The first victim after the cold open. She's a nice lady. Yeah. There's just nothing mean or nasty about her. And Not everyone who gets their, eaten are bad people. Yeah, and that's their the moment that they show that this is... Yeah. yeah. Ah, I like that the smart, competent person, basically the one who is going, we need to do this, we need to do this, and this, the, uh, I guess the Brody? I guess. Is a woman. And nobody blows her off because she's a woman. Yeah. The only people who blow her off are blowing her off because they're either the jerk-like possum who doesn't want them interfering with his prize, and Big Bill, who's going to... Who doesn't lose, want something interfering with yeah. the... Yeah, right. basically the people who are being nothing. jerks about yeah. not wanting anything to interfere with their big festival. Yeah. The uh, only and, thing and related they, you know, to They would have their... blown off a guy yeah. saying the same thing. The so. only reference to their nature is Big Bill calls them kids because Tara, Eric, and Wyatt, who are kind of this trio at this point, all at least a generation younger than him. Well, yeah, because... And, you know, they're well, all I get the impression or, she and yeah. she might have been in her first year. No, I don't think she was... being gone for four years. The thing is that there's no mention but of yeah, race when, or when, sex when these when things you, happen. When you're an adult Except and for... you're into your 40s and 50s and 60s, the twenty, the early 20-somethings are kids. Yeah. yeah. The only time anyone actually does any of this stuff is Jason London is a star, and, well, he's a white guy star who likes women. And he, at one point, oh, I think it's, he's being a jerk about something, and she looks at him and goes, there are people who are dead. Or no, it was about the one specific woman. He's like, this was a person she had friends and family and you're well she doesn't say but her tone of voice says and you're being an ass and he's oh i'm sorry i shouldn't be such an ass and comes over and gives her this hug that she clearly did not want and she's like yeah no dude get off me yeah and it wasn't a gropey hug. No, but it was still... But it was still an unwanted an, contact. An, an yeah. Unwanted. Even, but it, yeah, even it, that is as only as bad as it gets. So, it was yeah. more jerky than creepy. Yeah, yeah. Because he'd been pretty much playing up to all of the other pretty ladies in town who were yeah. excited to have a Hollywood star. Right. And this another thing is that you've got this pair, Wyatt and Eric, these two friends. Yeah. The white guy was the comic relief. Yeah. And especially when the three of them together. Tara is this genius. She, she, She's the scientific genius. And, a, yeah. and, and Eric Eric's is the, the mechanical, mechanical. And competent and pretty much all the other stuff too he, he does have his physical capability moments and Wyatt is just the jerk with a heart of gold yeah, kind of but very, a, a lot of jerk <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah 
So kind of nice that it's the white dude is playing comic relief to the black dude and the woman. Yeah. So again, yeah. nice representation. Yeah. And um, well, overall, this is the hard ticket to Hawaii of the shark films. It is just so cheesy and ridiculous, except every once in a while, there's this really well-written bit. It's like, I can't really even And, and it's only it. one movie. Yeah. It's not like hard ticket was... Do we make movie A or movie B? Oh, let's just make movie A, B. No, this is clearly just like you have Jaws set at the beach where people are swimming. This is on the river where people are fishing. And that's the setting for the shark attacks. This is a shark movie. It's a parody comedy shark movie. There is a romance (laughs) in the shark movie, movie, but that's not unusual. It's a B plot at most. Yeah, and it's just, it works. Because it's funny. And on that note... Speaking of funny, there's this one point where there's one of the people in the Shark Derby is listening to the the radio. And uh, this song plays. And I'm listening to this song going, is that an actual country song or is that a parody of country songs? Because it's really hard to tell. And then he gets attacked by a shark. Oh god, this is another one where we had to take a screen cap. (laughs) This managed to outdo the guy with the shark through his chest. Not because of what happens at first. because So the sheriff, Tara's dad, and the reporter are driving to try and get people off the river. And uh-huh. they see this shark with feet out of his mouth walking onto the road. Basically, it's this a guy a with a shark covering. The shark had attacked him head first and was had covering. Had him all the way down to his ankles. Him all the way down to his, his ankles. And he was walking onto you the could road. See, you could see maybe six inches of foot and, and ankle and leg. That is not and the most ridiculous. Walking. Yeah, that is and not the most sharks, ridiculous thing. And up until that point, none of the sharks were that big. They were bull sharks. They weren't. I, I don't think most most of the sharks were only five or six feet long. That is not the second most ridiculous thing I know, about but this it's scene. Just, it is one of right. the ridiculous things right. about this. Scene. So yeah, and then the shark explodes as they're pulling off the road and screaming. Well, no, I think what happens is they, because obviously the guy can't see where he's going because he's covered in shark, he stumbles onto the road. They try to swerve, but they don't completely swerve out of the way and they hit him. That's not what I saw. I thought it was they hit him and that's why the shark exploded. No, because then he would have been hit by the car because he tears his way out of the shark. The shark explodes and this dude who had been swallowed by the shark sits up covered in shark grew and chum as becomes a point (laughs) point later and he walks away. (laughs) Yeah, they're like, oh, are you okay? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, and he's a little wobbly, but yeah. he gets up and wanders off, and it's definitely one of those things. I think even the characters stand there and look after him like, what WTF? <laughs> And to get a... And, and that's where the we mentioned earlier about the truck not working. Right, And right. that's why the truck's not working that's because he, that whole incident, Because yeah. of what he did to avoid hitting the man yeah. covered in shark. <laughs> and to get in an obligatory Futurama reference for Arkel... That just raises further questions! <laughs> What, is this guy Kryptonian or something? Is he a mutant? But, well, it's and like, then the movie just moves on. Yeah. It just, there was a dude swallowed by a shark, blew his way out, or got hit by a car, and whichever one of those two things happened, he was functionally yeah, unharmed. because he's laying there in the road, covered in that red stuff that's supposed to be blood. <laughs> and they're like, you know, oh my god. And then he sits up. He's like, no, oh, I'm okay. He, he walks away. He, yeah. he kind of staggers off. Yeah. And that's just, I think that's yeah. the last you see yes. of him. He survives the movie, as far as we can tell. Yeah. So, uh, again, I have a note about people not being redneck about the interracial uh, relationship yeah. that Eric and Tara are obviously yeah. starting to right. develop a thing. And it's clear that people are noticing that they are turning into a couple. And nobody says word one about it, including yeah. her dad. Yeah. And again, props to the movie for yeah. having this film set in this clearly redneck setting. Yeah. But and, the only and nobody's, and character... nobody's being redneck about yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, the only character who even sounds redneck is Big Bill, who is clearly this broadly played character. Yeah. There is some weirdly good writing in this thing. In the middle of all of this utterly bonkers, bat crap, insane absurdity, you get Wyatt mentioning that his uncle is lazy but reads Prowse and he's really deep. And Eric and Tara have this conversation in the middle of this very serious conversation about chemistry, and they're very careful not to explain how you make a bomb out of fertilizer. Because but... she's in the process of using fertilizer and mm-hmm. PVC to make mm. pipe bombs to go after the shark. And Eric is talking to her about <coughs> what she's capable of and how amazing this is. And there are these really good moments of writing and character development and clever. It really feels like some higher up at Siffy wanted a bat crap crazy parody film and got a writer who wanted to do something serious. Because this is the, I don't know how many th movie from the same mm. people. Right. It is self-referential right. because this guy had already done shark movies. I mean, as Arkel 
mentioned, there's a sub-sub-genre of shark movies that were made for Siffy. And yes, I know it's sci-fi, but when they changed it to... S-Y-F-Y. S-Y-F-Y, and we're really stupid about it, we started calling them Siffy, and it's kind of stuck. Right. But, I mean, this is a movie that has a shark chestburster and a reference to Proust in the same movie. <laughs> And that's really all I can say about it. And yeah. the Proust reference is not just some stupid... No, it, it actually makes sense in context. It's a throwaway line. Yeah, because I, I think Wyatt says something deep. Yeah. And somebody goes like, wow, no, no. that was... No, just he's talking... His, his uncle is probably just at home reading Proust. And Eric's like, what? Oh, yeah, my uncle's lazy, but he's really deep. Yeah. That's the line. I really stuck out for me. He's like, okay. <laughs> And this is a movie, again, with a shark just burster and a guy who appears to be half Kryptonian tearing his way out of a shark or surviving getting hit by a car after getting swallowed by a shark. Either of those things is just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. So one moment that just... It was one of those out of nowhere all moments oh, yeah. is at this point, all of the main characters who aren't assholes are going up and down the river. When they spot somebody who's out yeah. fishing, it's like, no, no, get out of the water. You got to get out of the water. And, sure. and uh, there's this one guy out on a little tiny boat who has seen that there's a big fish in there because he's got the little radar thing on his boat that shows mm -hmm. you. And the sheriff's going, you know, you need to get out of the water. You need to get off the boat and get out of the water. And the guy's going, no, no, I can take him. And he's got a harpoon, harpoon gun. gun and he's getting ready to shoot the shark. And either that shark or one of the other sharks, because there were multiple sharks, yeah. bumps the boat and he fires the harpoon gun and kills the sheriff. And that was just, it really felt like an out of nowhere, why are you doing that in this film? And it's like, well, damn. I mean, the character says that. So I'll be damned. Thud. Yeah. And I think they just drop it at that point and it's yeah, never well, mentioned again. Oh, he's so. dead. I mean, they obviously Well, find yeah, him but later. I mean, nobody says anything about it, so. It really, it's pointless. It, yeah. Gratuitous. I don't know if gratuitous is even the right no, word. I mean, considering the, the other things that happen in this film, everyone else who dies in this film is, is killed by a shark. Yeah. That one was and, just kind of, well, damn. I mean, it might have been some weird gun safety thing with a harpoon gun, but... I don't know. It of, seemed gratuitous Yeah, it just... Yeah. And then we get to the good part. The last <laughs> killing that's actually gratifying. So, Possum has taken the opportunity of all of this chaos to grab the trophy yeah. for the, the Catfish Rodeo, rodeo Festival thing. They use a bunch of different terms yeah. for it. So that's why we're going, I'm going yeah. back and forth. Primarily they use Rodeo. And he's grabbed the trophy and he's going to scarf off with it. And the sheriff, or no, Big Bill is coming down the yes. road the other way. Yeah. And he's like, Possum, what are you doing? What do you got behind your back? And Possum, being an idiot, he's got the trophy behind his back. He turns around to look towards the water, to look looks the back at Big Bill and says, I don't know what you're talking about. But while he turned around, he turned his back with trophy to Big Bill. Stupid move right there. So then the two of them both know that. On the that, docks. Well, actually, at this point, they're kind of on the bank. Right. No, and Big Bill's, the possum's on the dock. That's important. I think he moves out onto the dock during this, okay. though. Because at first, when he's doing that, shows Big right. Bill the trophy while he's turned around. And Big Bill's like, no, give me that. That is property of the festival until I crown the winner. And Possum's going, no, you saw my fish. I won this fair and square. But and they didn't. start, he starts backing out onto this. It's not even really a dock. It's this little, looks like it's about six inches, maybe a foot wide at most. They're docks uh, for little fishing boats. Yeah, but it's not the sort of dock you're, you're meant it's, to really the walk out on. It's, the important thing is out on the he's water. He's walking out on, backing out onto this thing out over the water and, Bill and Big Bill him. follows them and they're the both of them they've each got a hand on the trophy and they're you give me you give me the no it's mine no it's mine and at this point I wrote is it bad that I want these two to wrestle over the trophy and both of them go into the water <laughs> well then what happens is the two of them are holding the trophy the shark jumps out of the water mind you the water at that point is probably only about two feet deep oh think about some of the ridiculous physics things I know this, sharks have done. I'm just I'm adding to the ridiculousness <laughs> yeah. here the shark jumps out of the water water, takes the trophy and both of their forearms, forearms basically yeah. their hands, and goes back into the water. And then the two of them are standing there with fake blood splurting out of the mm -hmm. fake stubs mm -hmm. going, ah! And then they both fall over into the water. <laughs> and there's a little bit of churning in the water and that's that. Yeah. But yeah, it's just... Please tell me those two guys are going to both fall in the water and get eaten because they're both being assholes. And then what they did was even funnier than yeah. <laughs> both fall into Close the enough. water. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, that'll do. Yeah. And then finally we get our climax. It's so the intelligent kids come up with a, a reasonable plan to catch the sharks, get them into a net. They're going to use the bomb to kill them after they're in the net, and that doesn't work. That's also the comic relief kid's fault. Let me throw it, let me throw it, let me throw it. And he throws it and it bounces off of them. And I'm like, you know, there was really no good way to throw that anyway. But there's really bad CG because there's this net with shark tails sticking out of it. And you can really tell that the shark tails are, are photoshopped yeah. onto the, the CG. Just so you can really, see that the really sharks bad. are in the net for 
whatever reason. The, the thing is, it's been really clever up to that point. They got the net and the big uh, and tow truck. The, the tow truck apply. that they're using to pull yeah. several sharks worth of weight in this yeah. net out of the water. And that tow truck has been there the whole movie. So that that one is very no, much the, a part no, of the, the yeah. tow truck is yeah. not an asshole because yeah. they were that was their thing. They were going to use the tow truck and the derby yeah. to catch catfish. Uh, yeah, they actually caught a shark for a short time, and then well, weird stuff happened. But so yeah, eventually they have to find another way to kill the sharks, and they do, and they pull the sharks onto a road just as a truck full of lumber that had been mentioned way back in the beginning of the film is coming into town. (laughs) But yeah, but at first it's like, you know, they've got the net, they've gotten all the sharks to go into the net, they've pulled the net out of the water. Yay, this is working. There's too much movie left. This is not yet. They're not gonna... Well, that's before the bomb incident. Because everyone is like, dude, you're, you're not good at this stuff. I mean, all I have to do is drop it straight down. And he did. He dropped it straight down right onto the side of the net. And it bounced off into the water. And, and they make a point because this kind of deprives Tara of her moment with the bomb. So there's this huge explosion in the water. And Wyatt goes, oh, yeah, wow, that would have worked. That really would have killed him if I hadn't. And he doesn't actually say outright screwed everything up. But it's a, if I hadn't, well, you know, and well. Messed up. Yeah. So, so then they come up with the pulling them onto the road thing, and well, then the truck hits the truck hits the net full, full of sharks, sharks and, and of course splatters them yeah. all over the place. But hey, now the sharks are all dead. Yeah, and they've got old chum, old chum. <laughs> uh... I wrote nice de and now I can't remember oh, what it was. Three months later, because Wyatt, uh, I forget how he got hurt. Oh, um, one of the shark, one of the shark bits is hanging over him afterwards, and it falls on him. And, and oh, yeah, it looks like he's like he might have been killed or something yeah. because right. But then three months later, we find him working at the shop that Tara's dad owns with an eye patch, which Jason London's character had. So he gets to live the dream, and then the, the, the girl the, from the, the beginning, the young lady from the, the beginning from the cold open on the riverboat, who had been going on about being a fan of the shark bite movies, uh, she was clearly there, and I think they, they name dropped Tinder. Yeah, and the guy horrible there, Tinder. Her, her, yeah, it was a horrible Tinder date because he was a horrible Tinder date. Yeah, she's going on about the shark movies. He's like, well, hold on. I need to, I want to go out and get some air. And she comes out onto the deck later and he's hitting on another woman. Yeah. But shortly after that, he gets eaten by a shark. And I didn't recognize her at first. Uh, Robin did. But she comes into this little hardware store. At the end of the movie. At the, the end the, of the, the movie. Epilogue. And it's like, you know, excuse me. My car broke down and my phone's dead. Do you have a phone I can use? And he's like, oh yeah, sure. And I think, I forget if it was the eye patch or if he was. No, he wasn't. He was wearing, he was wearing he the shark used to be, shirt. No, he wore the shark bite shirt through the whole movie until he found out that Jason London was a jerk. Right. So the end of the movie, he's wearing a Harry Potter shirt that says the, the boy, boy who lived. lived. <laughs> yeah, because he survived the movie. Oh, I think she says nice eye patch. Oh yeah. And he, he's like, yeah. And then she's like, oh, you like the shark bite movies too? And so there's yeah. this sweet moment with these two, these the uber nerds of this one franchise yeah. finding one another, yeah. and they're probably gonna hit it off. And, yeah. You know, it was just it was a nice moment yeah. there. And it was also nice to know that she survived the cold open because they smashed a black as she is fighting off one of the sharks with an old lady's cane. Yeah. And then later... And I wasn't sure it was her until she mentioned having had survived a shark attack incident. Yeah. <laughs> because earlier in the film, after the cold open, when they're first getting word of the sharks, there's like, yeah, there was a shark attack on a riverboat down in New Orleans that killed a lot of people. Right. And thinking back afterwards, it didn't say killed everyone, but yeah. killed a lot right. of people. So, so you kind of assume that she, she's dead until, well, the Until the she epilogue. shows up in the epilogue, the, the which, was, yeah. which was nice. So it was just it was a surprisingly good it's only good in the sense that it's fun kind of like like I said it's the hard to get to lie of, of the shark film. set yeah. Yeah. and it, it is not objectively it does, a it, good movie it does not take itself too seriously it is, it, it's uh, but I probably had the most fun with it's, this one. It's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a, a tough it's call. It's cheesy fun, but it's not a hot mess like Hard Ticket. Yeah. It's hard to say which of the two I had more fun with, but I think I'm going to lean towards this one because, well, Hard Ticket to I was made in the 80s, and when you're rolling your eyes because another two blondes have just taken off their tops for no... I mean, they're getting into a hot tub or something. I forget what it well, is. Well, there's another scene, I think, where they're... You can get a hot tub in a bathing suit. Yeah. There was, there was yeah. another scene where the two of them stripped their, their shirts off for really no good reason other than the director said, okay, it's been too long since we had boobs. <laughs> yeah. Mississippi River Sharks does not have any problems like that. No, <laughs> I mean, it I, is just... I'm pretty sure there's no boobs. <laughs> Only okay. shark boobs. 
boobs. No, all, all the boobs are, are appropriately covered because there are there are scantily dressed women, but they are not that normal. scantily clad. Yeah, they're they're the way you would expect people would be dressed for a catfish festival, right? Right. In in, in warm weather, <laughs> so they're just out there, and so yeah. that is that is Mississippi River sharks. Yep, and, and that is shameless cash grabs. Second opinions. Yeah. Shameless cash grabs. Because second opinions. Season seven is still in progress, so he he, he doesn't know yet what the best movie <laughs> yeah. of season seven is going to be. So those are our opinions of these movies, worth every penny you paid for them. <laughs> Some of them are worth watching and some of them are... I think they're all worth your time if you are a fan of the subgenre right. they're in. Yeah. Well, but only a couple of them are worth your time, even if you're not necessarily... Right. Shark movies are not a big deal right. for us, but this one was fun. Yeah. So it is what it is. Yeah. And it doesn't pretend to be anything other than what it is. Nope. So congratulations to Arkel on the fifth anniversary of Shameless Cash Grab. I Go didn't Arkel. realize we'd been doing it for that long. Yep. We obviously had to make some changes to the process and the format about two years ago when everything changed. Yeah, like the rest of the world. Yep. Not some vampires, were... not zombies, just idiots. <sighs> because people don't listen to the scientists. Mm. If you're still watching Oracle's show, you're probably not one of those people who doesn't listen to the scientists. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you wouldn't be putting up with them anymore. So I guess that's it. Yep. And... I'm Robin. And I'm Morgan, and thanks for listening. Greetings, Starfighters. Robin here again to make a shameless book plug for Discami Publishing's Absolute Power, a modern superhero tabletop RPG supporting adventures across the entire power level spectrum. I'm happy to be the lead writer on this sequel to Silver Age Sentinels, with Mighty Mark McKinnon presenting the most robust version of TriStat's fourth edition to date. The Kickstarter for Absolute Power launches on February 8th. The link is in the show notes. Please look forward to it!